Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So, last video was a pretty long one because it was chase problems. This video is going to also be pretty long because it's going to be advanced chase problems. That's right! Last time we did chase problems, they weren't even difficult. All right, I lie. They were difficult. But these ones are going to be a little bit more difficult. Well, okay, actually, kind of not. See, remember the advice that I always give you guys. When confronted with a new problem, turn it into an old one you already know how to do, right? And that's going to be our goal here. We're going to turn this new problem into an old one, which basically means, basically, that we're going to be dealing with a chase problem with one extra step at the beginning. So we do that one step to turn it into a normal chase problem, and then we solve it like normal. And that's going to be the big trick here, okay? We're going to just turn this new thing into an old thing. Once again, I strongly recommend the notes. Let's take a look here. So some chase problems are even more complex because they introduce a top or max speed. Right? And I mentioned this in the end of the last video. This breaks the problem into two distinct parts with separate accelerations. There's going to be the part where we have accelerated motion and the part where we have constant motion. Basically put, if I do a quick sketch here of a graph, we're going to have a velocity time graph, and we're going to have a velocity graph that looks like this. And there is a very clear mark here. There's a very clear line that cuts this graph right here. And these two sections behave differently. Why do they behave differently? Well, think about it. If there's a top speed, you have to know what it is. The question has to tell you. So what we're going to notice is that section one over here is actually a normal kinematics problem. We'll have enough information that we can solve, right? We'll have three terms. We can solve for the missing two. But section two here isn't going to work because we don't know where or when the race ends, or the chase, I should say. So that is what sort of throws everything off. In a lot of cases, even though the question officially starts at time equals zero, practically speaking, it actually starts here. This part is basically a normal question tacked on to our chase problem. What do I mean by that? Well, let's take a look at an example here. We're going to go back with the speeder in the police car. Okay, so we've got our police car here. <clears throat> shield and the little light on top and we're going to have our speeder spoiler and his window and his speed lines we're still starting them in the same place as our first example so they're both still at the stoplight when this whole thing begins they're right here at our stoplight And they're still going to race ahead, and they're going to have a chase. And we still don't exactly know where the chase will end. It'll be somewhere out here at the finish, but we don't know where. So for the most part, this looks the same as the last question. There's really only one change. So if we take a look here, it says, a speeder passes a police car stopped at a light, and the speeder is going 40 meters per second. All right, I changed the numbers a little bit. Shocking. So the speeder here is going at 40 meters per second. And of course, the police car was stopped, so we can immediately write that down. The cop turns on the sirens and decides to accelerate at two meters per second squared to a maximum speed of 50 meters per second. There's the part that's new. How long is the chase? So this represents the police car. The police car is basically, right, it starts at zero. He accelerates up, in this case, to 50, and then he continues at 50 until he catches the perpetrator, the speeder. The speeder, meanwhile, is moving at a nice, solid 40, so we'll say about here, the entire time. So there's the speeder, right, and here's the police officer. 
So the two of them are doing two very different things. But as I said, this question, we can break it down. This first section, we're going to solve separately from the second. We're going to work this part out, and then we're going to look at this part after. So in a lot of cases, we just pretend this doesn't exist. It doesn't, we don't care. We just care about that first section. Now, when we want to talk about that first section, we write out our information. We've got the policeman in that first area, and we have his VI as 0, his VF as 50, his A as 2, his D we don't know, and his T we don't know. But look, that's three pieces of information. We have a lot. We can solve this like normal. There's no real restrictions on our ability to work through this question here. Compare that to the speeder in the first area. Well, his velocity is 40, <coughs> as is velocity final, and his A is 0. D we don't know, T we don't know. OK, well, I can solve this, right? I have enough information that I can solve the police car relatively easily. So we have three of our five terms. So yeah, let's do it. Let's let's figure out the time. Let's figure out the distance. Okay. So uh, let's see. We got VI, VF, A. Let's find T. So we're gonna go VF equals VI plus A T. VF is 50 equals, this is 0, so I'm just not going to bother writing it. 2 times T, well, wow, this is hard, 25 seconds. So I come over here, and I realize that I don't know where my eraser is. It's in the same place I usually put it. 25 seconds. Well, if it takes 25 seconds to go from here to here, that's how long that time is. In this context, the two vehicles are connected. 25 seconds. Why is the time the same? Because that is where I am putting this dotted line. I am saying that I am sort of like ignoring the second half of this question, right? This part doesn't exist. Stand in front of it. There we go. This is the only part that we care about. And where's this dotted line that cuts the first and the second area? It's at 25 seconds. How do we know it's at 25 seconds? Because I just calculated it right there. Because in order for this blue line to work, based on that math, huh, over here, it needs to be 25 seconds. That's it. We're done. Okay, so this is 25, which means this is 25. So what's the D for these two guys? Well, D equals uh, VI is 0. So I'm going to use equation 5 here. And I'm going to get mm, 2 times 25 squared divided by 2 for the D of blue. And for the D of red, it's going to be much simpler. It's just going to be 40 times 25. Okay, trust your calculator time. 25 squared times 2 divided by 2. Okay, the 2's cancel, so I'm not sure why I'm running it out, but I've already done it. So here we go. D equals 625 meters. I now do the red one, and I get 40 times 25, and that's going to be 1,000 meters. Okay, so what do we know now? We now know that in this first part of the question, the blue car moved 625 meters in 25 seconds. The red car moved 1,000 meters in 25 seconds. So now we check. Is the chase over? Is the policeman and the cop car, and sorry, the policeman and the speeder in the same place? No. One of them is at 1,000. The other one is at 625. They're clearly at different spaces. <clears throat> so we're not done yet. And now is when the question turns into a chase problem. Because going forward from here, this whole piece of information that we've written out, well, this only applied to the start. So now I'm going to write out a second set of variables for the second part of the question. So we're going to call this policeman 2. And his velocity initial, in this case, is 50. So is his velocity final, because now he's moving with a constant velocity. I don't know d, and I don't know t. And that's going to be our problem here, right? We don't know how to get these two numbers, and we don't have enough information to do it. It's turning into a chase problem.
So this is sort of the weird thing about this. As I said, at the start, this question wasn't really a chase problem. We had enough information to solve it, but now it is. Because look at this. I don't have enough information to solve either of these two. So what do I do? We write out the chase equations. We work out how this would normally look. So if I do a real quick sketch here, right? Here's the end. The policeman is sitting about here, right? He moved a total of 625 meters. The speeder is sitting about here because he moved a total of 1,000 meters. How far are they from the end? Well, we don't know. But here's the funny thing. Remember, we want to turn this new problem into an old one. right? There's tons of numbers. We, we've calculated a lot of things. But if the speeder went 1,000 meters and the policeman went 625 meters, how much space is between them? Put another way, what's this gap here? Hmm. Because if I take my 1,000 and I subtract 625, I get that, that gap is 375. Why is that important? Because everything that happened in the first section doesn't really matter for the purpose of the second. What does that look like? That just looks like a chase with a head start, doesn't it? Right? That's the key to this, turning the new problem into the old problem. Right? There's this whole extra step we had to do where we had to calculate values for this first section where we were speeding up. But all of that math just turns into a single number that shows how far ahead of the policeman the speeder is when the chase begins. And that's it. That's the big trick. You've got to do one step first. You've got to figure out how far the policeman has gone and how far the speeder has gone because then you can figure out what the actual separation between these two is. From here on out, this question becomes almost trivial. Almost. Because just like a normal chase, I now write out the equations using these numbers. And what do I see? D equals 50T. And for red, it's going to be D equals 40T plus the 3, 7, 5, because, of course, that is how we move the speeder back in line with the policeman. That's it. We've done these kind of questions before. This is just the second example with you in the bus. But here's the thing, right? It's going to be even easier than that because there's no quadratic here. I don't have any t squares. There were no accelerations. So in some ways, this question is easier than question two because I just make the two of them equal to each other. Just like I do with every other question, I move the 40 over. Well, it's going to be 50 minus 40, so that's just going to be 10t equals 375 divide both sides by t by 10 you're going to get 37.5 seconds so how long is the chase well this is 37.5 so is this because they both arrive at the same place at the same time now what do i do well the question said how long is the whole chase 37 plus 25, right? 25 for the first part, 37 for the second part. We're done. I add them together. Total time is 
37.5 plus 25. So we're looking at, what is it, 7, 5, that's going to be a 2.5, carry the 1 for 62 seconds. Did I do my mental math right? Maybe. Hopefully. So that's it. That's the advanced chase problem. It's not that much different than what we've already done. And that's intentional. Always the advice is to turn a new problem into an old problem you already know how to do. You know, hopefully, how to do a head start problem. You just take whatever the head start is and you add it to pull this guy sort of back, to say, like, this guy only has to go this far. Well, okay, he also has to sort of include this piece, the extra bit here, to make it the, so it's the same. And then you just solve for t. And then you solve as needed for everything else. In this question, I didn't even need to find d or, or anything. It just asked for the time. So there we go. If there is a head start, you're going to break the problem into two parts. You're going to break it into the first part, the first part, and the second part. The first part is a normal kinematic problem, one that you can do very straightforward, right? Nothing to it. The second part, that's a little bit different. That's just a chase. It's a chase with a head start. How big is the head start? Rather than tell you, you calculated it, right? Remember, originally the policeman and the speeder started in the same place back here. But of course, each one of them moved a different distance in the 25 seconds of that first segment. So there you go. That is how to do the advanced problems, where you calculate the head start from numbers rather than are just given it. And with that, we're done chase. See what you guys can do. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions and probably a lot of scratching of heads. Obviously, the big trick here is we've got to make sure to keep the information separate, right? There's the first section here, the second section over here. First, second. What do the numbers mean? That's always the hard part, right? Oh, once I get the numbers, I can put it in easy. Yes, but what do they mean? How does it work? How do I think about the question? How do I picture the question properly to be able to understand it? And that's the hard part. But I will see you guys next time.